In recent months, we've seen the issue of slavery and colonialism expand beyond campuses, as we've now got, of course, from Barbados to Jamaica, prominent Caribbeans are also calling for Britain to pay reparations for slavery and the consequences of colonialism. And Madam Speaker, were we engaged in this debate in 1807 or 1833, I likely would have crossed the floor to support the motion opposite because, of course, the victims of the horrendous horrors of slavery would have been alive and deserving of damages. But it's not 1807, it's not 1907, it's not even 2007. Over two centuries have passed since Britain led the world as the first empire in history to abolish slavery, and the right of reparations died long ago, because reparations are fundamentally about matters of tort law. The purposes of damages, restoration, of reparation, is to restore the victim, the slave, to the position they were in before the damage occurred, slavery. The actual victim only can receive damages, not their descendants. And therein lies the rub, because some six or seven generations separate those alive today from their British Empire slave ancestors. And whilst not just yet, thank you so much, Whilst it's undeniable that 19th century slaves suffered unspeakable horrors, in what way can this lead one to conclude that their great-great-great-great-great-great-grandchildren are also victims and deserving of reparations too? Yeah, it's not because mine or your great-great-great-granddad was a dickhead that you've got to pay for it now. And it's not because your great-great-grandmother was a victim that you're a victim now. On the contrary, from Britain to the Caribbean, the descendants of slaves today have a far better and higher quality of life than they would have had had their ancestors remained in Africa. And that's an indisputable fact. Well, if you let me carry on, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. This man's a historian speaking at Cambridge University. It's meant to be one of the most prestigious universities in the world with some of the most intelligent students. Yet you've got a bunch of them getting angry when they hear facts they don't like and another bunch in the background giggling like little children. Well, first I ask you, is a current descendant of a slave ethically entitled to benefit from their ancestors' sufferings? And who should pay? Is it ethical for an innocent person today to be culpable for the sins of their forefathers? Now, CARICOM, which is the Caribbean body calling for reparations, wants British taxpayers to pay. But why? Out of a population of millions, there were only 3,000 slave owners in Britain. The vast majority of the population of Britain descend from people whose lives are one of abject poverty and hardship, working in hellish conditions akin to serfdom. Why should they, as taxpayers, pay reparations? It's not just yet. Thank you so much. 16% of the British population is now also foreign-born. So why should they pay for reparations? What about the descendants of slaves living in Britain today? Why should people from Trinidad and Tobago living here pay reparations to people in Jamaica? Then again, why is the demand for reparations always focused and framed in terms of Britain? Why are no activists asking for reparations from the African states that were equally complicit in slavery? Should they not pay reparations? They provided the slaves that were transferred over the ocean, and millions more slaves were kept in slavery in Africa by other Africans, just as were being transported across the Atlantic. Why does nobody ever actually speak about that unpleasant truth? What about the Arabs and the Muslims who bought and sold African slaves for centuries before the British arrived and continued to do so into the 20th century until the British and the French tried to stop it. What most people don't seem to know or forget is most races have been victims of slavery at some point. Slavery is a fucked up thing that's existed since the beginning of civilization. Humans have always enslaved other humans and it's still happening today, but they don't give a fuck about those problems that happen now. They're too busy playing the victim to things that never even happened to them and happened to their ancestors hundreds of years ago. And indeed, what about the slavery that carries on today? The International Labour Organization says that currently approximately seven in every 1,000 Africans is a slave. 10 million people. In 2017, CNN reported hundreds of slaves are sold every week in Libya. So much energy is given to historic reparation and the historic plight of slaves I would have more time for the argument if the people actively, actively pursuing that course of action were equally vocal 
about surely the far more horrendous plights of slaves today, where there are more slaves today in bondage, in slavery, than crossed over the Atlantic. So where are the protests outside the Nigerian High Commission? Where are the protests outside the embassies of Niger, which has 800,000 slaves today? What about Mali and Chad and Sudan and Cameroon? It's almost as if there's an ulterior motivation behind the call for apologies and reparations exclusively from Britain. Yeah, that's just because it's not trending on TikTok or Twitter yet. As soon as it is and it hits the mainstream media, they'll all jump on it. Because a lot of the time they don't care about these problems, they just care about looking like they care about the problem. And how far should we take this? Should Britain seek reparations for the Barbary slaves? One million Europeans were enslaved by the Ottoman states of Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia. And it carried on after the abolition of the slave trade by the British. Should Britain demand reparations from North Africa? Of course not. It's time to move on, and so should we. What disadvantage has colonialism actually caused to those living in the former British colonies of the Caribbean? Most of the former colonies of the Caribbean are now successful middle-income countries. The GDP per head of the Bahamas is higher than Portugal and is comparable to Spain and Italy. You never hear that, do you? Rather than writing checks to well-off areas of the world, why not focus on countries and areas that are actually impoverished and require aid? The population of India soared from 170 million to 450 million over the course of the Raj because of medicine, health and accurate and proper nutritional standards and food storage compared to how it had been. There had never been in history of India such a surge in population growth. And let's not forget also what Britain did for women's rights, because I think it's fair to say that it's thanks to the British Empire that we have had the progression of women in Africa and India through society. Because, of course, India's history is one of female oppression. It was the British who abolished Sooty, the burning of widows on the funeral pyre of their husbands. It was the British that stopped the infanticide of young girls. And it was the British who allowed Hindu widows to remarry. I'm sorry if you don't like the facts, but facts are actually facts. Universities were brought into Africa and India by the British. It's quite a, there, would be no, there would be no system of democratic legislatures within these regions. It's like this comment says, imagine being at an educational establishment and getting angry when someone actually teaches you something. He ends up completely silencing those rude little donuts in the background as well. I'd like to end by quoting the great black civil rights activist and socialist Bayard Rustin, a friend of Martin Luther King Jr.'s and posthumous recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Barack Obama, who said, if my great grandfather picked cotton for 50 years, then he may deserve some money. But he's dead and gone, and nobody owes me anything. Thank you. I think all this man is saying is Britain needs to stop paying and apologising for the past. He's not denying that terrible things didn't happen. He even said if it was 1807 and he was part of it, he'd apologise. He's also just trying to point out that some good things came out of it. There's less poverty in these countries, women have more rights and there's better healthcare. And look, we have some big facts here. Colonialism and capitalism together lifted more people out of poverty in the world than, than any other two forms that we have here. Wherever you go in the world, particularly British colonialism, every region of the world, the most successful, the most democratic and usually the richest countries are those that have a former colonial British inheritance. And there's a reason that Canada, Australia and New Zealand always rank amongst the 10 best countries in which to live and that's because of their colonial inheritance. You know, the army, the military, uh, schools, universities, hospitals, the infrastructure of government, the civil service, all of that is due to the British inheritance. And you know, if you look around the world, it's impossible to say that the countries of Africa and Asia and elsewhere would have had the evolution towards democratic legislatures and stable countries were it not for colonialization. Well, it's an interesting statement. It's a brave statement. Narinda is uh, the steam coming out of her ears. There as, really is. I mean, Ray, if you sound quite mad. I mean, I don't know where you get your facts from. No, for oh, history books, you should try no, to read one no, once in a while. Not, I don't know which history books you're reading, but they're not correct because you're talking about benefits to who? Self-indigenous people and people who were colonised, actually I call colonisation genocide. Let's speak facts. Your facts are actually British colonisation genocide killed... Genocide is a very difficult let me word, speak. I let, you, word to I let you speak. 
killed hundreds of millions of people. It's murder. There's a legal right. liability here. They killed hundreds of millions of people colonising the world. And actually, I don't like this argument, Eamon, yeah. that actually it was in the past, because you said that in the break, that actually it's in the past, let it go. The ramifications of colonisation are still felt today. Aboriginal people are still the poorest in health, education, and Aboriginal teenager is more well, likely to I'll go to you. prison I'll than tell you. I'll tell you. Someone said him, historical, her, hysterical. And it gets worse. Totally understand her into your, your argument there. But part of me says, look ahead, stop looking back. We can't change the How past. How can you look ahead when you're still suffering? Sp uh, uh, slave, people who were former slaves, their, their families are still suffering. No one is people suffering from colonialism. Poor. Come yes, on, Narendra. You're spouting you nonsense. Your Firstly, Racism hundreds of millions of people. Uh, hundreds of millions of people me, were murdered. Rafe, <laughs> right. you don't know your facts, and I feel sorry for okay. you. I'm, you Narinda may facts. be saying, I, 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 everything you said may well be true, but Narinda basically saying, it wasn't worth the price that was paid. Well, it's absolute nonsense. Firstly, there's no... Bit, there's, the excuse me, it's now price. my turn to speak. Thanks so much. Uh, hundreds of millions of people did not die underneath the British Empire. Yes, That's they a complete did. nonsense. Also, life expectancy for Aborigines for thousands of years had been 40 years of age. You know, they were a Stone Age, Paleolithic culture when the British arrived there. So they, they now have life expectancies of 70 years, 30 years longer. No, that's not longer. correct either. That's, they I, I'm sorry, I'm giving you the absolute fact here. Their life expectancy is decades less than white Australians. And the there, are many, there are many reasons for that, but it's not due to colonialism. Their, the, their life expectancy increased by 30 years in 200 years. No, After tens of thousands of years, it was 40 years. I'm terribly sorry, but you need to go back no, and do Rafe, some research. No, you don't know your facts because actually... <laughs> I mean, he knows plenty of facts. They're just facts that she doesn't like and go against her little race grifting act. I don't even think that deep down she believes what she's saying. She's just saying what she thinks makes her look like the best person. She's virtue signaling. The general audience is listening and watching us at today will will respect what both of you are saying but they'll say you're losing the argument because he seems very calm about this and you rightly probably so you're you're inflamed about this aren't you because people died at the hands of british government and the british monarchy all right How i'm sorry can i just interject that? let me finish now well okay. you spoke people quite a while died, okay. Amen. Right. Thousands, hundreds of millions of people died. Okay. How under do you the, respond in, to under that? the Indian Raj, the population of India increased from 170 million to 450 20 million. Twenty million died in the Bengal famine. hundred. The, the, the oh. whole cyclical famines of India ended because of British storage oh techniques goodness. and manu Ray, malnutrition you're a liar. projects. You're actually lying uh, well, about your that's, that's, lying. Well, I'd love to have a longer discussion no. where I can expose the, the nonsense that you're no, spouting you're, here. You're spouting also, nonsense on the British TV. advanced women's rights in India. The history of women in, in India is one of oppression. The British banned Sutti, the burning of widows on the funeral pyres, and the British allowed Hindu women to you remarry. In 1919, right? you shot you dead. You wouldn't be here enjoying the, the lifestyle you are were it not for the, the Britain's so great advances was, for women. I'm so terribly sorry. Rafe, what you're saying is because Britain, the great British Empire, we went there and we advanced social justices and all that. Therefore, I'm lucky. I'm not lucky if my ancestors were murdered at the hands Your of ancestors are also my ancestors. We, we're both we, Sikhs, all right? Therefore. So don't speak as if you have complete murdered. domain I'm over not this. Lucky. All right? I'm not lucky. You Indian are absolutely people, lucky. <laughs> Aboriginal people are not lucky because of British colonisation. British colonisation was genocide. I'm saying as a woman, as an Indian woman, you are lucky because I'm of colonisation, because I'm your lucky. life would not I be in as... I country where I faced racism. <laughs> I could have been back home, and actually India could have been richer. Thankfully, we are richer now. Thankfully, In India is one of the world's five most racist countries. I'm terribly sorry to break it to you. That's got nothing to do with colonization. <laughs> he was calm and just saying facts, and she was acting like a little teenage girl that can't control her emotions. And if she doesn't like England and she feels like the victim, then leave.